Yeah. I think Daniel thinks it's 4.30, but we'll uh, get there in a sec. Yeah, maybe, well, <laughs> Tail's right there. Have him complain for us. All right, hi, this is Curtle. We'll start in a moment, just sort of waiting for the co-chair to make his way up from the hallway conversation. Yeah. Where's the fun in that? I will start as soon as I load all the slides. Yeah, they're being passed. You want to broadcast the slides? I've never had this. All right, let me, uh... Cool. All right, Daniel. I've had this problem. At, actually, I've never had this problem at Akamai, but I don't know where he is. Okay. All right, well, you've all seen the note well many, many times by now. 
<laughs> okay. So as it flashes on the screen, we're gonna, this is a speed reading memorization practice. Okay, what was the third word? Any submission to the IETF is covered by that? At least use the mic. Oh, come on. Okay. Um, all right, give us a sec. Let me change the screen and see if I can uh, display properties. Yeah, it's it's like a refresh rate issue. On the other hand, there's a little piece of duct tape at the end of the plug here, which doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not sure what we're gonna do. Well, I don't have a Mac. Do you have a Mac? And this no. All right. Hey, do you have a Mac or PC? Uh, PC. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll try it. This is cable's been flaky, and otherwise Kyle has volunteered. Pardon me? Yeah, I know. Well, we, we haven't proved it yet. So, you might have to project, so see if you can do it. Uh, did you make connection? Yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah. really low profile. No. Yeah, well, I bet you... I don't think, I'm not sure this is going to make a difference. No, because it's going into the same plane. The projector might be. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay, so you didn't have to run all the slides. You good with that? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So the blue sheets are making their way around. We have, during this extended extended time. Wow. Okay. So for the one or two people talk for the one or two people talking, you want to stand behind the pink line, not in the box. All right. Okay, is this better? Yes. Okay, no feedback. Good. <laughs> All right. Okay, so welcome to welcome to Curdle. Uh, the blue sheets are making their way around. Um, Daniel's pulling up the slides. It wasn't planned this way. I think. All right. We should, we all know the note well. We saw it flashing for about three four minutes, so we can move right to the agenda. So first, um, we need a, a Jabber scribe and a note taker, two note takers. I'm sure you were all thinking how much more valuable your time could be if the screen weren't flashing. So let's make it more valuable to everyone else. Any? Wait. Oh, Guild Jabber scribe. Okay, thank you, Kyle. So. And. Yoha. Oh. Okay. All right. Thank you, Karen. Okay. Karen's taking notes. Okay. Good. Okay, so yeah, okay, so all right, why don't you just drive that back? Yeah. Hi, so maybe we can start with the presentation on DNS with Andre. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Hi, uh, I'm. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andre uh, from Cizering. Um This is just a short presentation. What to do next with the EDDSA and the NSEC? Uh, next, next slide, please. Uh, we have two drafts: uh, the ED two five five nineteen and ED four four eight. And well, I'm here basically to ask the working group what to do next because we have three options, keep them separate, just drop the ED448 or merge them. So if you have an opinion on that, I would like to hear it or we can just hum. So anybody with opinion? Um, you have near, of course merge them. I mean, they'll be practically the same. Well, the, the question is, yeah, if, if, we, if we need ED448 in the NSSEC, and uh, that's not that clear that, that we need such a strong crypto in the NSSEC right now. I, I don't think you'll ever get the a room to say, no, drop the high security option. I mean, that's, it's just never happened. Francis. Uh, Francis Dupont, I see. Uh, I believe we should first solve uh, the not technical problem we have to uh, deploy the ECDSA. I have nothing about uh, organs uh, ETDSA, but uh, I see uh, ECDSA is not uh, yet really deployed and uh, usable. So uh, I'm afraid we are pushing uh, too much things. Uh, well, yes, but as Oliver showed at ICANN, it takes something like 10 years to deploy a new algorithm in the NSEC, and so we, can, we should start now. And, and, and what you are saying is quite orthogonal to my question. So, uh, just uh, a, uh, One uh, point we should solve is to have a good procedure for uh, algorithm uh, rollover. I, I believe today uh, nobody knows really how to do it in production to change the algorithm. So maybe there are two things. If it's um, a problem of defining new crypto, or yeah. is that a DNS problem? Uh, it's, uh, it's not a technical problem, I say. <laughs> so yes, it's more for a DNS or like yeah. that. But uh, I don't believe you to propose a lot of uh, new crypto, it will solve uh, this problem, and uh, it's a problem to solve today. Well, Paul Hoffman, what Yoav said, uh, I don't think we can drop it, and some people, I think it's a reasonable thing as a fallback, I mean, that everyone should be using 256, but if something happens 10, 20 years from now, if 448 is already in the implementations, that's just fine. Um, what I would like to add to this, though, is what I sent to the mailing list, which is I would like you to take out the descriptions of why they are good and such yep. and simply point back. And at that point, sure, have it as one. Uh, don't have a suggestion about anything because, again, that will come from the DNS off or but just describe them and describe both. Okay. I, 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 I have a slight preference for you naming ED448 fallback. You know, so list it, but have it uh, give it a name that doesn't just seem like it's bigger. But that's sort of a naming faffing around. Okay. Uh, as far as keeping them separate or whatever, that's an editor's decision. As far as I'm concerned, I really do need the 448 because I want to get rid of the NIST stuff that I'm doing with Curve 384 already. So, I mean, the fact that ICANN runs a DNS with security, I mean, they're probably the smallest use of DNS sec today. There are a lot of people using DNSSEC that don't change the ICANN route, have no intention of doing it, and that's probably where the majority of the use is today. Okay. Dan? Dan York, I would say, uh, I would not, I would encourage you not to drop for this, the ED448 for the simple reason that it will take us, as we have discussed, a long time to get these new algorithms out into the provisioning systems and other pieces that are there. So I think that they, they should be both out there. I'd encourage both choices to be kept and to be kept separate as there so that, as you said, we can begin now because it will take us several years to get these out there. Okay, so I haven't heard anybody saying that we should drop it, so I think we 
we should merge those two into one document and go forward, right? Yeah, please, Ham, if you think... Anybody no. opposed to merging those documents? <laughs> well, Dan, Dan, again, I guess what's... Are you just saying have one document that specifies both algorithm yeah. types? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I have no issue with that. I think we should just have both algorithm types. Okay. So, is anyone, anyone opposed? No. Everyone in favor? Yeah, it sounds. Okay, so <laughs> and who sleeps? <laughs> <laughs> the, question is on, the question is on merging. We'll confirm on the list, but all those in favor of, doing, of merging a single document with both types come now? Okay. All those opposed? All those who don't know enough to say? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So, I think we for, will. Just a question or just a comment for the chair. If you, we do have several remote participants. So if you can go to the mic when you're talking on that, that'd be awesome. So now I think we, we're going to have a presentation about SIP authentication. Hello? Yeah. Um, here I want to have a, a shortly uh, introduction about our work about the C authentication uh, using ECSRP5 uh, protocol. Uh, this work is mainly be dealt with uh, in the SIP core, but I want to present here to draw your attention and to collect your comments. Okay, please, next slide. Uh, for the SIP, uh, which is a, a popular standard protocol mm -mm, which is used for the VIP who, uh, uh, which is uh, deployed in the uh, uh, wired network and wireless network. For the SIP authentication, uh, it used uh, the, uh, the HTTP digest authentication as one option for user authentications. And uh, we can see uh, from the next slides uh, next slide, please. Uh, and uh, that is a, a short description about it. Uh, SIP authentication based on the HTTP Digest, and uh, we can see there is a challenge and the response about the HTTP Digest authentication. And for the next slides, uh, the Digest authentication that we can see the server will uh, verify the client by using the response hash HA1 nonce HA2 and the H1, uh, the most important key is the password. So, so if there is a, uh, the attacker, uh, uh, the attacker can get uh, the password just by guessing. So, the next slide shows that the password is uh, easy to use and low cost, uh, but uh, but the most uh, weakness is that uh, the password is not uh, so secure. For the user selected password uh, from uh, from the 88 uh, printable characters, the security uh, length is about a 30 bit strength, so it would be cracked very easily. So based on that, uh, we want to introduce uh, uh, the some some enhanced uh, uh, password based uh, 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 the authentications. So next slide shows that. Uh, uh, that okay. Oh, 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 oh that's this why the safe authentication is now weakness because the uh, uh, the attacker can uh, just uh, trying to guess the password. So next slide shows that uh, there uh, uh, in the 2009 uh, the IEEE released the standard uh, that regarding the password authentication agreement protocol, which. Uh, can can be divided into two categories, and one is the balanced password authentication agreement protocols, and the other is the augmented password authentication agreement protocols. And uh, uh, for the 
uh, the augmented password authentication agreement protocols, uh, uh, the client knows the password, but the server only knows the uh, the uh, images, and the SRP is belong to these categories, uh, which is a specif also specified in IFC uh, 2945. And the next slides that uh, um, we can see that we want to. Uh, 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 we want to introduce the ECSRP5 protocol because that uh, this protocol is, is uh, defined uh, also in the IEEE 1363.2, uh, uh, which is published, and uh, uh, we think it is more efficient than the SRP protocol. Uh, so we want to apply in such protocol uh, rather than SRP protocol uh, in uh, to the CPA authentication. Uh, so based on that, we uh, we we applied in the next slide. Uh, uh, actually, okay. uh, we'll we'll cut it off because we only had it. We only had a couple of minutes. The intent was just to make the people in this working group aware that this other crypto work was going on in the SIP core working group. Um, we only had a few minutes allocated for it. So is there one more slide you want to? Okay. Is there one last one you want to bring up? Uh, maybe one, two slides. Uh, the next two? Uh, yes. Okay, okay, the next two. Okay, okay. so here is the, uh, uh, the image of how the uh, server uh, calculated and uh, the server will have the, uh, uh, the, the, the CPUI, the SARS, the Eclipse cur uh, index CCI and the uh, uh, verifiers and then uh, the client and the server could be uh, uh, the client could be authenticated by the server uh, in the next slides. Uh, that by using the uh, CPU uh, the, uh, the client sends the CPURI to the uh, server and the server will make uh, uh, will look up the uh, VSCCI and then by using uh, uh, the ECDHE uh, uh, method to uh, to generate the pre-shared, uh, 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 to generate the shared secret Z uh, uh, between the client and the server, so uh, the client server will uh, will be uh, the the client uh, could be authenticated by the servers. Okay, uh, for the time uh, uh, limitations, uh, there are some uh, security considerations that we can find in the draft, and I think uh, uh, okay. okay. Thank you. So thank you for the presentation. So just again, it's not work that's going to be handled in this working group, but uh, it, it's handling with elliptic curves, so, and it's going to be done in SIPCore. So if you're interested, you're encouraged to subscribe the mailing list and attend the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm presenting for uh, Mark. Next. All right, a little more readable than the note well flickering. Um, it's got, pro can you blow it up a bit? I guess the short answer is look at the slides. Um, there is a proposal, oh, there we go. Um, a number uh, about doing a new uh, elliptic curve key exchange for uh, SSH. Uh, number of proposals that this slide does is list all the proposals that were reviewed, discussed, uh, and considered in a group that included the implementers and other interested parties. Um, and I guess the question is, uh, you know. Did we, we adopted this already, right? Sorry, yeah. We yeah, we've that. already adopted this. So how many people, uh, just raise your hands because it's not important. How many people have read this spec? Okay, we should fix that number. <laughs> how many people will try to read the spec? Comment on the mailing list, great. Okay, so about almost a dozen. Um, this is sort of the first concrete use case of um, you know new elliptic curves in working group in one sec, Paul, in cryptography that don't doesn't have a home elsewhere. So it's sort of like right in our ballpark, Paul. This draft doesn't deal with elliptic curves. This is this is the larger Diffie-Hellman groups. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I bundled it all together. Yeah. Good point. Yes. Flip the curve. 
ECDHA, whatever, same thing. Okay. Any other comments on this? All right. So as nobody has read the draft, I will just ask quickly. These are fixed groups. So 14, 16, 18. That's what I got from the slide. Okay, so why is this superior to Diffie-Hellman Group Exchange? Okay, why is that good? Yeah. I'm, I mean, honestly, I don't know, so. The, the problem with the, if you, they're okay, uh, uh, Tiro. They're okay, yeah. 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 So, the problem with the generating groups is that if you really want to create the groups that are safe, you need to prove that they are actually primes, and you want to make them Sophia Kerman primes or something like that, which actually takes, you know, 10 minutes, 10 minutes or something like that. If the server or client proposes you a group that you don't know anything about, are you going to accept it? Or are you, you know, just going to say that, oh, okay, I, I've run this 10 minutes and verified that your group is fine, and then it will allow you to get in. It, it's okay to have, a, you know, groups that, are, if you have, you know, groups that in your organization that you have generated, you know that they are safe, you can distribute them and use them as uh, this different group exchange firm. But if you want to have, you know, random servers and client talking, I think it's better to have a fixed groups that are generated in a way that is standardized and, and you know, you know that they are safe. So that's why, for example, IPsec and so on uses these fixed groups. And the fixed groups are, there is, you know, if the groups are long enough, there is no problem of, you know, using fixed groups. Yes, attacker can do the, you know, pre-calculation, which, which, is, which is a problem with the thousand bit group. People say that, okay, in a couple of years, they could do enough, you know, pre-calculation that they can actually break it in a few months. But, I mean, yeah, if you then use the long, longer groups, Okay, it, in a couple of thousand years, they can do the, you know, the enough the pre-calculation to break it in a couple of hundred years. So it's not an issue. So I don't think it's an issue of using same groups in ev everywhere, but I think it's actually a bad idea to assume that the group that the other ones gives you is safe always. And I assume these groups, 14 and so on, are actually the same groups that are used in IPsec. <coughs> Numbers look very familiar. This is Daniel Khan Gilmore. So uh, one of the counter arguments, I, so first of all, I agree with Tara, this is the right thing to do. One of the counter arguments that is usually given is a, um, um, is a concern that, uh, that a particular group might be compromised, um, perhaps because of, those, because of these attacks or that it could be used across protocols. I would be happier if people were using uh, distinct groups or distinct uh, protocols. Um, if you accept variable groups, then, oh, so sorry, one of the other arguments that people put uh, as a counter argument is, look, if you don't trust the peer that you're talking with and they give you a bad group, well, they could just leak all your information anyway. Um, so you might as well accept the group that they give you. But that's actually not a good argument because it could be an attacker who's giving you a bad group um, and then it's possible that an attacker can sort of force you into a key exchange um, if the protocol isn't cleanly designed. Um, so it's much better to say, here's a set of groups and reasonable peers will only use these reasonable sets of groups. Good answers. That satisfies me. All right, any other commentary? Okay. And now we have a last presentation with no slide. Paul? no slide and, and very little content. So um, my, the concern I brought up on the list about this of why are we having two sizes of group, uh, t two sizes of elliptic curves, and again, this is just talking about the elliptic curve stuff, is that pretty much every single cryptographer will agree that 128-bit strength, equivalent strength, is good enough for everybody, and that would be like the 25519. Um, some people get a bit confused because the NSA, for certain things like top secret, require higher bits, although the NSA has never said that there's a direct correlation to the higher strength. It just puts them into a different security group, and that's the security group they already had. So my preference, if we're going to do anything about suggesting the use of um, 
256 bit versus 448 is that we keep we stay out of that completely and we keep 448 as conceptually as a fallback in case in the future um, elliptic curves in general start losing some strength until then every, I think if we're going to make a recommendation everyone should be using the 128 bit strength ones um, and it might even be better again not to suggest if both of them are mandatory to implement but one of them is mandatory to use namely the one that is going to be sufficient for everyone that's just fine um, I'm specifically concerned in the DNS sec space where it's signatures where signing something especially a long-term sign you have a long-term key such as a trust anchor those are very hard to change and if everyone goes to the stronger one we're going to lose a lot of benefit so that, that was just it I think we're fine as we are now especially for the the DNSSEC one if we're combining them um, and that we're going to have the 448 size key available so just a thought I'm sure we can discuss this more on the list just one question when yep. you say we're going to lose a lot of benefit what do you have the results or the time or uh, well certainly size on you know on it as well as time although I think time is less important than the well, size on this. The, zone, the size so. is much smaller with these than anything that we're currently using today current absolutely and so I'm but the size of the of 25519 is smaller than 448 Yes, marginally, but compared to the even RSA 1024, these are sure. tiny. Yep. So, uh, are you are you do you disagree? Do you think we need to have stronger than 128 bit strength for normal use? Uh, my understanding is that elliptic curves fall to quantum crypto faster than RSA does. Um, so no, at this uh, okay. My understanding is they fall at the same speed. Sorry. So yeah. Uh, so. My understanding is that, they, is that uh, there are quantum algorithms, if a quantum computer exists, mm -hmm. that can be con the, the computer can be constructed more cheaply to attack what we currently believe to be equivalent in the non-quantum sense for uh, elliptic curve and uh, RSA. Oh, okay. I did not know that. So, and so, and, and so for that reason, you want to so have... So making sure that we have a 448 gives us a little bit of extra buffer saying, yes, you have, if you're going to do a quantum attack, you need to build a slightly larger quantum computer. Okay. And these are expensive to build. As I understand it, no one's ever built one. Right. I certainly don't know of one, but I would definitely, I, I do not want us to actively discourage the use of the stronger one, particularly given that it's significantly smaller than anything we have today, right. and it should be relatively cheap. So I wasn't, I didn't, to be clear, I didn't want to actively discourage the use. I wanted it as a fallback, which is different. So I want it there and I want it available, but I want it as a fallback. Do you feel like that that's inappropriate and you would like us just to start using 448? Or, you know, from what you just said about I, the I, I see no problem with going ahead and using 448. Um, if, if people have specific concerns with using 448 right now, I'd be happy to hear them. Okay. But I don't, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't tell anybody who, who just says, you know what, I'm going to go with 448 to say, no, 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 don't do that. It's going to cause okay. problems because I don't see what those problems are. Okay. Yeah. I, I, when, when you're looking at RSA versus e, uh, elliptic curve, as far as the number of qubits, yep. you're not going to be doing index calculus or anything like it in quantum mechanics. It's just a, it's a different approach. And so, you know, 256 bits of uh, elliptic curve are about the same as number of qubits as 256 bits of RSA. And so it really is a big d reduction in the work factor. You might have to go to a, a huge... I think we would need to hear more from CFRG on that. That's right. not the way I've been reading the CFRG list. So, uh, so my understanding is that the, uh, is that the, the size of the key the uh, asymmetric key that you can break is a function of the number of qubits. Right. And as and so, for a 2048-bit RSA key, you would need 2048-bit 2048 qubits to break it. I thought and for that a 250 break, I thought that the whole idea with quantum cryptography, and again, this is my understanding, not strong, was that the quantum cryptography was actually helping the um, math behind the difference between. So for the factorization. No. Well, it's no. so Shor's algorithm. I mean, assuming that assuming that we're talking about Shor's algorithm here, it requires the same number of qubits as are in the key. Okay. So that that's okay, why that, that ECDSA so presumably falls faster okay. than finite field. Okay. Operations. Yeah, I mean, basically, you, 
you're not talking, you're not worried about the length of time it takes this machine to run. You're looking at how many refrigerators size of machine you need to crack the key. Okay. You're going to need a warehouse twice as big to break a 448-bit key as 256. Okay. So that's the, uh, I really need 448 because I already have customers that are using 384 for P-Kicks. And I am not going to go and tell them, go to 25519. I don't no, Nor would you need to. Um, yeah. And the other thing is that um, for, for the stuff that I'm doing, which is managing private keys, I really do want the work factor to be uh, 2 to the power 256 and not 2 to the power 128. And I, I think that I've got good reasons for doing that. Okay. So, Stephen Farrell again, wearing no hats. What, what, what's the decision to be made in this working group? I, I'm not sure. I was just saying I didn't want the decision to go towards suggesting both and such. And so, I, and, but at this point, I think none of the drafts that we're talking about are necessarily going to have that. Specifically, the one I cared most about, which is the um, DNS sec key, is being done in DNS op. Right, that, yeah. that's my point. So, I think yeah. I, 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 so in some sense, this is a no op. In, 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 unless in, we add other drafts. Like, like we were supposed to have a larger charter than what we are matching now. So that was my concern. That's why I was saying I, this was not like a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. And now I think we can go to the discussions. Yeah. So now let's go to the discussions. Um, so the big question we have is um, curdle of this design initially only to extend different crypt, uh, different protocols with the two elliptic curves. And it happens that we, we hosted some of the SSH work, so it extends a little bit more the scope of the working group, initial working group. So we have um, two questions. So do we need to recharter? And uh, if people agree or disagree on hosting SSH work? Comment on the mic? Uh, Jim Shad. Um, I actually was really rather interested in all the P-Kicks stuff that were documents. Is there a reason why they, those documents didn't show up? I don't know. I uh, espe especially given the, the case that the two of them severely conflict with each other. Uh, we, we sent a few emails, but we did not receive any feedback. So, Stephen Farrell, I guess this time wearing an AD hat. Yeah, I mean, there's the, the charter mentions a bunch of things. Uh, I would be much, much happier that you do those first before extending or thinking, even you know, having a big debate about extending to do SSH protocol work. And even then, I'm not sure. So I would, I, you know, unless there's like a whole bunch of people that are going to line up here. I, um, I'm kind of unconvinced that this group should recharter before having uh, some of the, you know, quite small and well worthwhile pieces of work done. Okay, so if I understand correctly, we have to do the, the work fast so that people from SSH can have a working group. <laughs> well, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, there, there's, there, there are a bunch of drafts. I mean, progressing them is, is not going to be necessarily very hard. No. We charted this group saying there might even never be a need to meet. So I think you know, getting, getting some of the bits and pieces done is, from my point of view, you know, I, rem I remain to be convinced that this working group should do anything else. So I, I'm <laughs> What Steve said aside, I'm curious if there's anyone else who is interest is interested in PKX and and let's just at CMS, right? Just for two other potential ASN one oriented data formats. I don't have the time. Sorry, this is DKG. I don't have the time to commit to writing those drafts, but I'm definitely interested in seeing them produced. I think it would be really important to make sure that we can get um, an X509 certs that that use these? Well, Hoffman, we already actually have a draft in the working group. It just wasn't presented here. Simon wrote it up. Very simple, two pages. For P, I'm sorry, for P-Kicks, not for CMS, but I'm not sure 
that we needed anything for incorporating that with, with CMS. But we at least have the PKIX one already. Yeah, what worries me with the PKIX thing is not so much the draft itself, but uh, I, I have memories of arguments as to the format of keys for uh, elliptic curves in PKIX, and two camps emerged, and I can't remember which camp is which or whatever, but it seems to me that people who had actually had a dog in that fight uh, we should make sure that uh, we pick the we don't unnecessarily offend people by picking the wrong camp. Um, I yeah, Jim Shot. I actually sent this to the mailing list and have not seen a response from them. But one of the dra the two drafts actually don't say the same thing. They actually conflict in terms of how OIDs are set up, how to, how structures are set up. So you know, right now, I one of them kind of makes sense and the other one makes no sense at all. But there's a common author on both of them, so that's kind of problematic. <laughs> Or symptomatic. <laughs> and if Curdle doesn't actually get this done at some sort of reasonable time, I would not be surprised if there is a, we're in the process of potentially spinning up a new working group to deal with S spine fixes. And if it doesn't get done here, then I would expect us to just go ahead and grab it there and do it. So don't, don't leave. Um, outside of the inconsistency, were there any other problems from the S-MIME perspective you saw in the drafts? No. OK. So I mean, just... here's how to carry a public key. Um, there is a piece of mail that just came out. Um, it turns out that Russ Housley hadn't actually seen the draft, so he actually uh, circulated a private draft to a couple of people, and we said, I'll look over here, there's some, some OIDs, and he would like to actually see some name changes, mm -hmm. but, then to, but the basic structure is fine. OK. All right, so we should direct um, Simon to fix those and update the things. Um, I encourage people, yeah, to look at Jim's note, which I had forgotten on the list, and Russ Housley's note, which just came out a couple of hours ago about the naming of things. Um, as we know in security, naming of things is really important. Um, and I think on the mailing list we'll call for consensus, consensus or ask for consensus on making those two sets of changes before the next draft and then resubmit. Okay. Stephen? Why don't we just last call them? They're, these are tiny little changes. They're tiny little drafts. Just do the last call, get them out. What's wrong with that? Okay, then we'll direct him to make the changes and go to last call. Fine, working group last call, yep. Yeah. Pardon, pardon me? Simon. We'll direct Simon to, no, 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 we'll direct, sorry, we as chairs, we will direct Simon to address your issue and incorporate Russ's suggestions, Russ's suggestions, and then go to a working group last call. Oh, I mean, or just do the last call and say, these are last call comments and fix them Okay. I mean, I don't, I, we don't need loads of iterations. I mean, these are tiny changes. And if every iteration takes, you know, somebody to come back from holiday or... So the, my only concern, my only issue about doing that is it apparently there are other people looking at this stuff and it hasn't gotten a wide enough circulation, but maybe it's not necessarily for working group last call that can go on the next stage. Right. I mean, if you have working group last call, then we'll, it'll have an IETF last call anyway, yeah. right? So, and... I assume that people who write, there, there's a whole bunch of people who want to use these things in TLS and elsewhere, so mm -hmm. I think you'll get the eyeballs at that point, if, okay. if not before. Is that, is, I mean, is that correct? Or? All right. I mean, Yov, have you, have you been looked at these, or will you look at these? <laughs> Yov? Not to so, Steve, before you go, so uh, part of the issue with the PKIX ones is that they have 
uh, both the unprehashed and the prehashed version. And I think there was a general feeling, if I got it correctly, which I didn't seem to get right about quantum, in CFRG about that no one liked the prehash one, that they wanted the plain. Should we take at least take those out before our working group last call? What? Or, or you think you think I got reversed? They like the prehash. Okay, thank you. Up to the mic and speak, please. CF, uh, you have no, the CFRG um, standardized both the prehashed and non-prehashed because there's this um, use case that where you get uh, over the internet a large. A file or a large data stream and you want to sign all of it and you don't want to buffer everything just uh, to after a while uh, set it as input for the signing function um, but none of this applies to any of the protocols that we use like um, Ike or TLS or SSH or I don't know even S mime <laughs> perhaps S mime not all even right. S mime so okay. so you're all right just because the terminal just because the terminology gets confusing you think that Prehashed is not appropriate for what we need to do. Jim. I believe that most protocols that we write are going to not use the prehash version. However, I think that we need to be able to have prehash keys with separate OIDs so they are explicitly distinguished <laughs> in the document so they can be distributed for any protocol that does use them because there were a lot of people in CRFRG who were very vocal that they needed to have prehash even though a lot of people really didn't like it I mean that's okay. other, otherwise CFRG would have not done the prehash version right okay all right so We'll look for consensus. We'll look. We'll, I'll call for a hum now. The the choices are: take what's there, uh, with the comments from Jim and and so on about uh, and Russ, as change no, changes for to be made during the last call. Are you in favor? Sorry. So you want to see another draft? Okay. All right. So let's do that. How many people? How many people, the questions are, how many people want to see the changes before there's a working group last call, are accepted, wait, are willing to go into last call with these changes in essence pending, or don't have an opinion, don't need, don't know enough? So the first one is how many people are willing to enter last call with these changes pending? Come now. How many people want to see another draft before we enter last call? How many people don't know? Okay, so we'll confirm on the list, but clearly we want to see another draft. And intent, the announced intent is that these would then be moved into working group last call. Thank you. I think we're done. Yeah. Um, so in spite of the, we'll give everyone 10 minutes back, we, or we can do an open mic if anyone has any other elliptic curve stuff they want to talk about, latest tricks and twists. That was Joe. Um, oh. Pardon me? RSA shot two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. SSH. <laughs> All right. Uh, go line out early for the cookies or well, whatever we get. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know. So I know he's not quick. I know, because he's also, I think he's kind of. The first is, I mean, so I can tell this confidential safety practice is the one that was sitting there with the brain to go through the list two. No, the other one was the one that's But Yari? I wonder how fast it is to verify. So you don't want to do one of those. So you could, the cheap thing is like, what happens? He's saying it's like every So.
yes. and, then, and then they can come up with a group that, hey, I can work right. this group whenever yes, I exactly want right. to. Yes, exactly. I think Tiro might have actually done that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I apologize for it. I think he had a big computer just, like, right. converted. Yeah. So I did that for the TRS. Yeah. 